Hello, my name's Brian. I, like my compatriots alongside me, are part of the Ashford Phoenix group. There are around about 12 of us all together in the group. Some of them are camera shy. <laughs> got clippy <laughs> noses. <laughs> all the people in our group, I would say, are in the early stage of dementia, um, which allows us to get the voice out there, which perhaps, as you're further down your journey, uh, becomes harder to get to get the words out and to get an understanding around it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, there is a lot of positive out there, and I'm quite happy to move forward with that. And I'm smiling. Hello there. My name is Mick, and I've got dementia. Okay. A good shot of me right eyeball. Yeah. You know, I didn't sort of know. Didn't guess. I just thought it was getting old. Right. Yeah. Because I used to have a brilliant memory. When I was when I was in the RAF, I was in stores. Never bothered used to looking at cars. I could walk to any one of eighteen racks and pull out what you wanted. Yeah. Well, you mentioned you got dementia, and they look at you as if you should be sitting in a corner picking your nose or something. I always tell people I've got dementia. There's no point in trying to hide it. And you'd be surprised how many people sort of step back. Why do you think they do that? I don't know really. Because I haven't, you know, I haven't got any big long teeth coming out or pointed ears or anything. Well, yeah, I just like people to know that we're just ordinary people. I'm just an ordinary bloke, same as anybody else. Just take two, just for fun. Have take fun. take two? Take three, take two. Bloody, I'm not getting paid for this, are we? Yeah. Uh, you get it right, you might. Well, what's the surprise? I was so surprised at the support that I'd received now I'm down in the south as opposed to where I've just come from. The support is amazing. The empathy that I'm now receiving from the support services, including the National Health Service, is amazing. One of my biggest surprises is um, finding people that I didn't think would understand about my dementia um, make the effort to understand, and, and they stick around whereas a lot of people tend to fade away. It's, it's finding those people that just stick around to support you. What's the surprise? Well, I you know, remembered to come here. Very much so, yeah. I'm surprised that I did remember to come here. Nothing surprises me these days. I've, I've lived all these years and just about everything has been thrown at me somewhere along the line, so a surprise is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take two, do you? Right. I've been a borough councillor, so I've been used to doing speeches and that. But now, with a large group, just not there. <laughs> All of us here recognise that there's so many different versions of dementia. Um, people just don't understand the difference between them. In, in my own case, most of it is my speech. I can just freeze. Other people have other problems. And the amount of people who said, why have I still got a driving license? Well, it's quite simply because the doctor still thinks I'm capable. I've done steel work all my life. I enjoy making things. I enjoy repairing things. That's what I do. Um, I know we have a tendency to jump in on other people's conversations and cut them short from time to time because if we didn't do that we'd forget what it was we were supposed to be saying which makes life a bit awkward <laughs> when, <laughs> when you suddenly go blank <laughs> and uh, I can't do speeches and that in when there's a lot of people about. My youngest daughter decided to get married a few weeks back. 
I didn't feel comfortable doing the speech. So in collaboration with my son, we worked out the speech and he did it for me. Can't worry about the negative side of it. You just, if you get stuck, you just have to move on. Which some people, you know, what's that all about? <laughs> when, you, when you got stuck in your, in your speech and you suddenly alter it and talk about something completely different. That, that bit of land that we're looking at out there is supposed to be an extension to this place. <laughs> it was passed on the plans because I was on the planning committee. <laughs> I also think that we have to keep alive things our parents did so we can pass that on. And one of the things at the wedding I had the chain on, and on the end was my grandfather's pocket watch. This is something else from my father. He was involved in setting up a um, wildlife rescue place in Tring called Kittywinkles. <laughs> there he is. I've still got my man cave. Good. It used to be somewhere where I did carpentry and things like that, which has gradually been taken over by a train set, which obviously requires you to use <laughs> because there's lighting and you know all sorts of things involved in that. So that keeps but you on track. Yeah, it keeps me on track. Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. What is the struggle for you? I struggle remembering everything. I should probably forget this in five minutes. But there we go. Who cares? What I find a real struggle is, is the people who are very condescending and, um, and they just feel that they've got to stroke you as if you're a cat and when talking to you. And I, I'm not one to be stroked or touched like that. Thank you very much. Things used to be automatic for me. Now I have to go through a process. My struggles at the moment are that I can no longer do a lot of the jobs that I used to do because the mind just doesn't configurate that way anymore and that people no longer ask me to do things like they used to because they've got used to me having dementia and not being able to do things like I used to. You know I have four children um, and they all, all of them look at it in a different way and they all act differently. The biggest thing for me was to try and use some sort of an analogy so it was easier for them. When you were growing up I used to hold your hand to, to walk you across the road. As I get older now I will become in theory younger in my mind because I'm going to forget things, forget to do this, do that. So I will need your help. My name is Martin. I've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I live with it. It was hard, but now it's okay. What's it like for me? At times I look into the distance. I don't see anything. I can't pull my thoughts forward and process like I used to. It can be hard. All I want you to do is talk to me. I want you to pick my brains. My daughter said to me, what's it like? And it's quite hard for me to explain. I sit there, but I'm not thinking of anything. I mean, I spent 17 years in the army making split decisions. To go from that to this, and think, what am I doing? I can't remember how to do that. If you talk to me, normally, you'll find a trigger point. If you can hit that trigger point, I'll have a conversation with you. I'm not dead. I'm still alive and have a lot to offer. That's me. 
seeing it back shows how I feel. You know, it's 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 quite upsetting actually. In your life now, what is a joy? I had a lot of joy this morning. I had a conversation with my daughter. She called me about 7.20 this morning to see if I was okay. I told her I was off this morning to do some filming. We had a short brief conversation about the children and about the normal mundane things. I felt really good. I was inspired to continue the rest of my day in a nice, happy and joyful way. My biggest joy is finally marrying off my last daughter who for the last 20 years has said that she would never get married. <laughs> oh yes, ice cream and a nice big chocolate flake in the top. Yes, I think one of the, my biggest joys at the, at the present time is my grandchildren. It, they've now reached the stage where I can play with them and they can talk with me and, uh, and we can interact together. Whereas before, when they were tiny little babies, um, th there wasn't any interaction there. But now, we have great fun, good laugh. And my grandchildren always say, Grand Pops, you're daft, which is nice. When they gave me the diagnosis, strangely enough, in, in, in a slight way, I felt relieved. Because now I knew there was a reason. And I could draw a line in the sand and say, right, we can move on from here. My name's Chris. Um, I live in Ashford in Kent. Uh, I'm a member of the Phoenix Group, which is the Ashford Group. The idea is it's a proactive group to speak to all these various organisations and to get things changed, particularly to try and get rid of the stigma. Um, the temptation with dementia is to, to say, well, that's it, I've got to give up now, and, and, uh, 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 and you're no longer the person that you were. Well, you are still the person you were, you're the same person before your diagnosis as you were the day after your diagnosis. But now you've just got to draw a line in the sand and move on from that point. I find that by focusing on the things I can still do, that helps me keep my spirits up and keeps me positive. I can still do my music, which I could do before, uh, and I'm still, to a greater or lesser extent, able to just fit in with society and get on with my life. You know, everybody is different in this world and just because a person has a diagnosis of dementia that doesn't mean they're no longer a valuable part of society. A member of the group who is no longer with us, she said to me, have you thought of expressing yourself through drawing? And I haven't drawn anything since I was about eight. Um, and I went to um, an Alzheimer's seminar in London. I was involved in this little group activity and I done this picture and it was put on social media within a nanosecond. And so now I've started drawing um, and I draw reasonably well. You know, it's, it's given me something else to focus on. Um, you know, so there are other abilities that are, are being drawn out from me and that's what I want to do change people's perception just on one thing no matter how small it is then I think I've done a good job we'd like to ask you a few questions <laughs> and Roseanne is laughing her head off there how is Belonging to your group helped you living with dementia. Ask your group facilitator what drew them to work with people living with dementia. How is your group initiating your own proactive projects? How is your group managing to change the stigma around dementia?